And here is the Writer's Almanac for Monday. It's the 6th of December, 2021. It's the birthday of the novelist Sylvia Townsend Warner, born in Harrow, suburban London, 1893. Her father was a teacher at the Harrow School. And when Warner was 19, she began a love affair with one of her father's colleagues, a 41-year-old music teacher named Percy Buck. He was married with five children. He and Sylvia were lovers for 17 years. And then she met a woman, Valentine Ackland, six feet tall, wore pants and ties, cut her hair short, and she and Warner remained together as lovers until Ackland's death almost 40 years later. Warner wrote about Ackland in a letter to a friend, Here I am, gray as a badger, wrinkled as a walnut, and never a beauty at my best. But here I sit, and yonder sits the other one who had all the cards in her hand, except one, that I was better at loving and being loved. Sylvia Townsend Warner's first novel was Lolly Willows, 1926, about a lonely spinster who cares for her father, other family members, is so tired of her family, her responsibilities, she sells her soul to the devil to become a witch. It was a book with subversive messages that became a surprise bestseller. It's the birthday of Ira Gershwin, New York City, 1896. He was working in his father's Turkish bath when he began to write lyrics for his younger brother George's songs, Ira Gershwin, who wrote, I fetch his slippers, fill up the pipey smokes, I cook the kippers, laugh at his oldest jokes, yet here I anchor. I might have had a banker. Boy, what love has done to me. Ethel Merman sang it in 1930 in the musical Girl Crazy. And it's the birthday of Susanna Moody, born in Bungay, England, 1803. She and her husband emigrated to Canada, and she wrote about the hard life of the Canadian frontier in her memoirs, Roughing It in the Bush, which has remained a classic of Canadian literature, like Laura Ingalls Wilder's Little house books, but more grim. She said, My motive in giving such a melancholy narrative to the British public was prompted by the hope of deterring well-educated people about to settle in this colony from entering upon a life for which they were totally unfitted by their previous pursuits and habits. Here's a poem for today by Maxine Cuman in honor of George Bernard Shaw, the vegetarian entitled The Accolade of the Animals. All those he never ate appeared to Bernard Shaw single file in his funeral procession as he lay abed with a cracked, infected bone from falling off his bicycle. They stretched from Hampton Court downstream to Piccadilly against George Bernard's pillow, paying homage to the flesh of man unfleshed by carnage. Just shy of a hundred years of pullets laying hands, no longer laying, ducks, turkeys, pigs and piglets, old milk cows, anemic vealers, grain-fed steer, the annual Easter lambkin, the all-hallows mutton, ring-necked pheasant deer, bags of hair unsnared, rosy trout and turgid carp, tail-walking like a sketch by Tanel. What a cortege it was, the smell of hay in his nose, the pungencies of the barn, the courtyard cobbles slicked with wet. How we omnivores suffer by comparison in the jail of our desires, salivating at the smell of char, who will not live on fruits and greens and grains alone. So long a life, so sprightly, so cocksure. The Accolade of the Animals by Maxine Cuman from her selected poems 1960 to 1990. Funded by donations from listeners like you. Now available on PRX for distribution by your local radio station. Be well, do good work, and keep in touch. <laughs>